Josh Dobbs, who is the 49ers new backup quarterback was on the Adam Schefter podcast, Larry. Yeah. And, uh, he was talking a little bit about why he really wanted to get to the 49ers and you can listen to what he's saying, or you can just go back and look at the journey that brought him to the 49ers. I think both are reasons why he wanted to be here. He said, you know, when free agency came about, the opportunities were presented to me. And the thing that I wanted, what I said was the most important was to get to a place with a consistent front office, a consistent coaching staff that does a really good job at quarterback development. Um, I've had it. I, I, I've, uh, you know, I want an opportunity to go through a full off season in one scheme, get there in April. And even though I'm still learning, I'm going to learn this new offense, but it's an offense that has been very prominent uh, around the league. In other words, you go learn how to do it in San Francisco. That is a translatable skill to an awful lot of the copycat offenses that are running Kyle's scheme. And then he goes on to say, you know, I'll get there in April. I'll be around some tremendous coaches. I'm going to learn the offense from the bare bones of it. I'm going to throw routes on air. I'm going to build those interpersonal opportunities with teammates and then go into the season and be ready for whatever that role looks like. He is a big fan of Brock. Um, he's obviously very impressed that Brock has come up, you know, short in two Super Bowl runs here. And you don't do that from a place where Brock was drafted without excellent teammates and coaching. And I think Dobbs just looks at the 49ers culture, sees a level of success and stability. And it's just like, man, give me, give me a year of that. Give me one year of same team, same offense, competent coaching, good teammates, and let me see what I can develop into either as the guy who comes in and saves the bacon for the Niners as their QB2 or someone who plays themselves back into the realm of you could be a starter in this league, which Sam Darnold gets the opportunity to do without even being impressive for a singular day of football. So it just feels like if you shake Kyle Shanahan's hand as a quarterback, other teams are going to look at you differently. Well, Dobbs is smart, you know, and he's really smart, as we know. Uh, aeronautical engineering or whatever it is that his major was. And he's a really smart guy and he's athletic and he's been around the league and he's he's kind of he's gotten a chance. I'm sure when you're not playing, you're like, hey, I just want to play. Where can I play? And then he's gotten a chance to play in Tennessee, in Minnesota, in Arizona. And now he's looking around going, well, wait a second. My body's kind of beat up. I put out, I put out some good film. I put out some really, really bad film. And have I done a great thing for myself? So now he's looking at it going, well, how can I increase my value? And I can increase my value by going to a place where there's stability. I mean, I think, you know, believe me, if he didn't notice, I guarantee his agent noticed, hey, Sam Darnold went there. He signed for five and left for 10. You know what I mean? And he played one game and you can be better than Sam Darnold and you could, you know, sign for X and, and then leave for Y at some point. I think a lot of the things you said are spot on. I mean, I think that's what he's looking for. You know, he mentioned he wanted a, a you know, a solid front office. That box is checked. Niners have a solid front office. He said they wanted a solid coaching staff. You know, there's lots of Niner coaches that are picked off to be offensive coordinators in other places. Uh, he wanted to be developed as a quarterback. He wanted to play in a system that was quarterback friendly. Um, and Kyle's system is that. He wanted to be in a system that's utilized around the NFL. The Niners system is in Miami in some degree. It's in Houston in some degree. It's in Tennessee in some degree. And there's probably a handful of other places around the league that really kind of use the Shanahan system. So if you want to make yourself valuable, learn that system, show that you can operate it efficiently. And suddenly you might have five or six teams that are showing interest and there may be a bidding war for you next year. And if you play any kind of extended good football, there may you may get a bonanza bidding war. Um, but then I think the most interesting part was what he said about Purdy was that, you know, he just admires Purdy for his decision-making and for his, you know, ability to take care of the football and for his overall efficient play. And I just think that he feels like, hey, if I'm around this guy who's playing efficiently, not turning it over, running this system, making good decisions, I'm in a great system that's being utilized around the league. All these things, and I'm probably going to be on a winning team. I might win a ring along the way. I think, you know, like all, if you're smart, man, I mean, and he is, and he's looking at this thing really intelligently 
and thinking not just about the future. He's thinking about kind of almost like going back to college. Like, where can I go to give myself more skills so that I'm more valuable to other teams around the NFL? Hey, we say it all the time, man, that your career will be dictated by the talent you have in the situation you're in. Dobbs has a level of talent that has been better than basically any situation he's been in. And so, you know, there's a guy in the chat named Psych saying quarterback development, my butt. Okay, look, you can criticize Kyle Shanahan for losing Super Bowls or whatever you want. But when it comes to criticizing Kyle Shanahan for not developing quarterbacks, you sound like you're just not watching the football team at all. Like there's only been one quarterback that Kyle has ever coached who might not be able to play in football. And his name is Trey Lance. That's it. Nick Mullins got contracts. CJ Beathard got contracts. The last pick in the draft just was in the Super Bowl. Kyle looked at Matt Ryan, shook his hand. Matt Ryan had the single greatest year of his career and has never been as good since Kyle left. Like Kyle Shanahan does develop quarterbacks. I don't care what angry content creator talked you into the fact he doesn't know what he's doing. At that point, he does. Okay. Well, and it's, it's more than, I mean, what helps a quarterback develop? A surrounding cast. Look at the weapons that 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 Brock Purdy was surrounded by. People made these arguments that Brock wasn't Brock because he's just, you know, he's just a product of the weapons. And then suddenly when he plays well, it's like we forget that he had these weapons. Josh Dobbs, if if Purdy has a hamstring and can't play in week five, you know, and the Niners go out there with what they have right now, it's Debo, Ayuk. Kittle, McCaffrey, you know what I'm saying? Those are pretty good weapons. That's pretty, not to mention there's there's organizational stability. I hear what the person's saying as far as, you know, Shanahan developing. Did he develop, um, you know, is he a developer of quarterbacks or is he a play caller? But ultimately what we're talking about and what Dobbs is talking about is he wants to go somewhere where there's organizational stability there's a there's a, a, a an offense that if he takes the time to learn it, there may be a residual benefit from having done so because other teams use that offense and they may need a quarterback. Um, and you're surrounded by a nice group of of players that can help you. You know, uh, you can't do it alone. You know, I mean, <laughs> you got to have some good players. So I I do understand the person though who says. Kyle's not the great developer of quarterbacks. I don't think Kyle's genius is in quarterback development. I think his genius is in uh, play calling, play sequencing, play designing, offensive um, polish. What I mean, whatever you want to call it, identifying uh, the conflict defender, identifying weaknesses, and ruthlessly going at them. I think that's really more his thing than quarterback development. But Let's not pretend that Sam Darnold didn't just double his salary and looked really good. I mean, Sam Darnold sure looked good um, in, in the preseason in one game with the Niners. He looked better than he did at Carolina. He looked way, way better than he did with the Jets. So who are you attributing that to? to look, at, look at what Jimmy G was. With Kyle, he was a pretty darn good quarterback without Kyle. He is a non-functional borderline out of the league. You know, I know he signed on with the, with, the, with the Rams. Yeah. He's a, he's a definitive backup. Um, you know, he was being looked at as, uh, you know, he played so well for Kyle. He became the highest paid quarterback in the history of football there for just a minute. You I mean, know, he, it, he, he got a starting job in Minnesota I and mean, he's making $10 million a year. Well, you're talking about Darnold now. Not, I don't. Uh, I don't love Sam Darnold. Nick Nice or whatever says, "Oh my God, Larry!" All caps. Here we go. Oh my God, Larry! You said yourself at camp last year. Sam was horrible. Sam was. I, I I thought Trey Lance outplayed Sam, but here's the bottom line on it: Sam looked better than Trey in the preseason games, probably as far as moving the team. He definitely didn't have a game where Trey, like Trey did, where he looked kind of skittish. All I'm saying is go look at Sam Darnold with the Jets. Go look at Sam Darnold's final game with the Panthers. And then go look at Sam Darnold's game that he played at the end of the year with the Niners. He looked quite a bit better. Now, why did he look better? 
He looked better because he was buffered by a better offense, a better play caller, more talent. And Dobbs is looking at this going, give me some of that. Give me some of that. And I think Dobbs is, I think Dobbs is really smart because I think Dobbs also understands that, you know, if you can master this offense and there's 10 teams or seven teams or eight teams that are running this offense, then even if it doesn't work out here, let's say Brock Purdy plays every single game, you never get on the field. So what you spent a year learning an offense that's pretty prevalent yeah. around the NFL. And, and that's going to help your, that's going to help you succeed in your next stop. And I, he's a relatively young player. So I think he's, I think he's taking a very realistic view of where he's at career wise and uh, we'll see how it works.